The story of Stupid Mario Brothers and its creator, Rich Alvarez, is a tragic tale that we've seen play out time and time again throughout history. It's the story of a man who rose from obscurity, made a name for himself, rode the waves of fame and fortune for several years, and then watched in horror as it all came crashing down. It's a story that haunts me to my very core, as I fear the day that the same thing happens to me. This isn't just a story about some random web series that pioneered episodic storytelling on YouTube. This is the story of everyone who has ever had their 15 or more minutes of fame and suffered as they watched it all fade away before their eyes. This is the story of the rise, fall, and decay of Stupid Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers! Mario, you son of a Goomba! You'll never take us alive! Oh, and I only have one thing to say to you! What? What's that over there? What? <laughs> <laughs> It all started in 2007. These were still the early years of YouTube, and some would define them as the golden age. This was long before monetization, or Google's ownership, or Jake Paul, or any of that shit. YouTube was a place where people made videos for fun. Because they were passionate about it. Because it was their favorite hobby. That's not to say people don't still make YouTube videos for those reasons, but it sure is getting harder and harder to find. One day, a 19-year-old named Richard Michael Alvarez got together with his friends Chris and Matt, and using their Halloween costumes from the previous year, created a short skit about the Mario characters. Mario, what is it? Peach has gotten herself kidnapped, and her castle has been taken over again for the upteenth freaking time! Every time I take time off, she and her freaking toads can't handle themselves. After all, I am just a plumber, and I'm really tired of saving her lazy ass all the time! Mario, what should we do? Let's go look for some super mushrooms! Okie dokie! They had no way of knowing it, but this random four-minute skit that they made on a whim would soon change their lives forever. Uh, it wasn't long after I graduated that I started I started the YouTube channel in 2006, just right after I graduated. And we had some mediocre success, but of course it wasn't until 2007 when the first episode of Stupid Mario Brothers went on that yes. it was like, I, you know, I upload Stupid Marbos, which by the way, I'll just say because, it, you know, it's going to get asked. It was originally titled Young Mario Brothers, and that's why we did not have mustaches. It was supposed to be before the games. But I personally, <clears throat> after editing the video, was like, this is really freaking stupid. I retitled it Stupid Mario Brothers, and I was like, this is going nowhere. Go to sleep, wake up the next day, it's like 12,000 views. I'm like, oh, what? So, of course, you know, my friends are like, yeah, we got to make another one. We got to do another one. Another so what was originally a very stupid video, I now had to make a second video, and this stupid Mario Brothers was now retitled to episode one, and then we had episode two. Then, you know, 20,000 views on the first episode, 30,000 views on the first episode. By the time we got to episode seven, the first episode had accumulated a million views somehow. Uh, and it was this, you know, huge overnight success, and I was like, well, crap. <laughs> I guess this is what I do now. <laughs> Due to the unexpected success of the video, Rich and the gang went on to produce more episodes of the show. A show that would eventually lead to over 100 episodes, several movies, a bunch of spin-offs, wildly popular music videos, and a legion of dedicated fans. In the year 2007 when this all started, I was only 12 years old. And when I stumbled across the Stupid Mario series, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before on the internet. It was essentially a television show with characters and episodes and a plot, but it was being produced by teenagers on the internet. It was one of the most inspirational things I'd ever seen. I'd always dreamed of telling stories in a similar way, and Stupid Mario Brothers was evidence that thanks to YouTube, I could. Now I'm not going to give an in-depth review of the entire show, but I'll give a brief overview of everything. 
Stupid Mario Brothers was a weekly web show with every 15 episodes constituting a season. The first season was primarily a series of silly, episodic skits involving the Mario characters with a very loosely stitched together plot. The Mario Brothers had abandoned the Mushroom Kingdom to live a peaceful life on Earth, and Bowser was getting bored without anybody to fight against, so he sent Wario and eventually Waluigi into the real world in order to bring the Mario Brothers back. As we already told Wario, we are not going back! We are tired of running through Bowser's level! We're tired of it! You can tell Bowser he can get someone else to run through his levels! Yeah, what Mario said, get someone else! I knew you'd say that, but I won't let you run away. It's time for you to face us. As the show progressed, they introduced more Nintendo characters to the cast, with my favorites being Dane Kevin Cook as Ash Ketchum, Matt Provincial as Wario, and Doug Orofino as Waluigi. Looking back at season one as an adult, I'm not sure that I would like it, if not for the hardcore nostalgia goggles I have on. It's the amazing blend of terrible schlock and dumb fun that I love in amateur films, and it's very clear looking at my old work that I was heavily inspired by this season. Let's use our super speed power! And no, this scene definitely wasn't a ripoff of every single episode of Stupid Mario Brothers. But what really solidified Stupid Mario Brothers' legendary status was the season one finale when they upped the special effects to the next level. I mean, look at this shit! They've got these great lightsaber effects and fight choreography and everything! And this was back in 2008! It's ten years later and I'm still impressed by this shit! After a brief six-week hiatus, season two began. This is where the show really got good for me. While season one was primarily a series of mostly unrelated skits, season two is when the show became more story-driven and serious. It still stuck to its comedic roots, but the overarching story-driven nature of the show is what really sucked me in. And since the episodes were pretty short, there was little to no filler, which, of course, would become a huge problem in the future. Now, what made Stupid Mario Brothers so addicting for me when I was watching it as it came out was that it had a a continuous storyline, character arcs, all these things. It was like a TV show, but it was on YouTube, and I think it was very much one of a kind in that regard. Can you talk a little bit about the process of the show going from an episodic sort of uh, silly skits to, oh, it's growing into an, uh, a storyline that has all these different arcs and plots, and, and it really builds up and comes together? Yeah. So pretty much, like I said, by the time the seventh episode has hit, had hit, the first episode was over a million views. And uh, it was clear that we had this bona fide hit on our hands. Uh, and up until that point, all seven episodes were unconnected. We were just making stuff up. And then, and then I was thinking like, okay, uh, if people are really gonna be seriously watching this, I don't want this to be like, what random thing can we think of this week? So then, you know, I started to formulate what would be the plot of the last half of the first season where the Wario brothers, Wario and Waluigi, are trying to, you know, take Mario and, Lu and Luigi back to the Mushroom Kingdom, you know, which was kind of always their plan, but then we made it much more apparent and then they're working for Bowser and yada, yada, yada. Uh, so it was really just once, once I recognized that the show was a hit, I knew that I, I just had to kind of story formulate it if I was going to keep my sanity and kind of, uh, you know, just... That's also where the kind of the more serious tone stuff came in. A sure, bit. a little bit at the end of the first season, but really, then we took a month, it was only a month break or something like that between seasons one and two. We just, we, we were like, we, we took a few weeks break to just really think about everything and then, you know, uh, ideas started popping in and season two is really where it's like, this isn't just a comedy show, this also has a little bit of substance to it. 
uh, because, you know, Nox Decius came in, Merlin came in, Wizard Lore came in, and all these other things started to kind of happen in season two. And then I took that a stoop, just to stoop a step farther with my original characters in season three, such as, uh, you know, the darkness and a couple other characters. A I fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. um, to this day. Stupid Mario Brothers continued growing in popularity, and fans began pouring into forums to discuss the show. As the plot became more and more complex, fans would discuss theories of where they thought it was going. It was a fun community to be a part of, and I'm really nostalgic for that period of my life. Now, this show was a huge hugely discussed fan favorite show. You had forums of people predicting how the season finales yeah. would be and all this stuff. At its height, how popular was Stupid Mario Brothers? Yeah, that's right. We had forums when forums were a thing on the yeah, internet, geez. you know. But there was a time where, you know, any episode of Stupid Mario Brothers easily within five days was over 100,000 views. And, you know, after a month, 200,000, you know. So the answer is confusingly large. Perplexingly yeah. large. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it today, if, like, one of our sketches got 200,000 views after what? three days, so like, whoa, what? 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 And you know, we can get into YouTube stuff. I was gonna say, later, YouTube's but... a little different these days. You know, the, the lower viewer counts have a little bit more to them, but you know, yeah. you know that's, a, that's a different discussion entirely. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, there was a time when Stupid Mario Brothers was the bee's knees and everybody was talking about it and we were getting- you know, Which is still weird, but yeah, you know, that's, it's also true. <laughs> Season three is where the show truly peaked. It became much more focused on drama and character development, and it introduced another of my favorite characters, Solid Snake as portrayed by Julian Petruzzelli. They were firing on all cylinders here. Every episode was significant, the series of events that unfolded was exciting and well-paced, and Wario's character development as he struggled with being good or evil was genuinely pretty interesting. Come to die? This is your only warning, Wario. Stop what you're doing now, or be destroyed. Ha! You will all pay. Pay for what, Wario? None of us has done anything to you. If only you would listen to reason. I'm done listening to reason. If we have to go down fighting, then I suppose we must. <laughs> As season three came to a close and the show was as popular as it would ever be, there was only one obvious direction to go. A movie! The stupid Mario Brothers movie was split into two parts, with each part representing the two tones of the show. The first part was almost completely unrelated skits and music videos and random silly stuff, a definite whiplash from the serious tone of season three. This was rectified in part two, where the film became a dark, serious story focused on the most beloved character in the entire series, Shadow Mario, aka The Darkness. And the end you shall have. What? Who are you? You're not... Mario? No. I am not... him. I simply took the form of him, so that I could come into this world. What are you? In the darkness lies the truth. You've heard this, yes? The old Gerudo myth? Not a myth, my friend. I am the darkness. Impossible. You can't be. I don't need to explain myself any further. It's not going to do you any good, seeing as you are about to die. I won't. <laughs> Denying it won't help you. You're too weak to fight back. Goodbye, hero of time. This is pretty much the epitome of what I want out of an amateur film made in 2009. To me, this is fucking Kino. These days you might think of it as cringy or whatever the fuck, but I consider this stuff to be a million times better than the awful shit that Nostalgia Critic still cranks out to this very day. This is the sort of shit that I've always wanted to make, and I really, truly love Act 2 of this movie.
The original plan was that Act 2 of the movie would be the finale to the entire series. The channel continued making videos, many of which were very successful, but it seemed that the majority of the fan base just wanted Mario videos, and they were very vocal about this. So, they decided to continue the show, and produced a special episode called Operation Blindstorm that promised the continuation of the series. And this, my friends, is where things get a little bit scandalous. As I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite characters on the show was Dane Kevin Cook's portrayal of Ash Ketchum. At the time, Dane had his own YouTube channel called Random Prod, where he and other members of the Rich Alvarez crew would do fun skits. I'm currently unemployed. Um, I haven't really been able to find too many jobs out there that don't require, you know, dexterity or basic use of thumbs or fingers, so... I mean, yeah, sure, I have cups for hands. I know, I've come to terms with it. But I can still go out and I can still find things that I don't have trouble doing. After the filming of Operation Blindstorm, Rich and Dane had some sort of falling out, and Ash's character was written out of the series completely. Rich Alvarez claimed his fallout with Dane was due to creative differences, and no further information was given. Naturally, when a fan-favorite character and actor are removed from a show with no real reason given, fans become obsessed with learning the truth, and the forums and comment sections became filled with wild speculation and rumors about what truly happened. The removal of Ash from the show became the biggest controversy in the show's history, and still to this day, we don't know what really happened. This was actually one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to make this video, to finally get some closure for both me and longtime fans of the show. What really happened between Rich Alvarez and Dane Kevin Cook? So, during my interview with Rich, I took the opportunity to ask him to find out the truth once and for all. So one, one of the big controversies in Stupid Mario Brothers was that shortly before season four, one of the fan favorite characters, Ash, no longer appeared on the show. And there were so many theories as to why you and the actor broke up, didn't want to be friends anymore, whatever. So can we get finally, after all these years, an answer to why Ash was no longer on the show? I know when we, I don't want to answer for you because you're going to have to answer this, but just to preface this answer, everybody always expects us to be like some big, like, ah, and then this, and then he, he killed his cat, and all this sort of stuff, something like this, and then there's a car broke down, and somebody said there's house on fire, and it's like, you know, I remember like when the Facebook movie came out, you know, it set this precedent for like what online fame does to people and the friendships that it burns down in the process. When in reality, I think a lot of the answers are just like, oh, we had some creative differences and we moved on. And I, I think that's the answer for a lot of the yeah. things that people see on these things. It, it's sometimes it's hard for fans to understand what creative differences means. And I'll clarify right. that. It's like, you know, because to the fans perspective, it's like, how could you leave this incredible, huge thing? It's like, right. but to us, it, even though we recognize that the show was doing well, to us, it, when we were filming Stupid Mario Brothers, it was, we weren't always like, ah! Oh my God, we're filming to I'm Mario and Stupid Mario. No, it just, it felt like we were just Yeah, you have to understand, like when we're doing this, like we're in a backyard that we've like <laughs> been in. And it's like a camera pointing at us and it's sweaty and it's hot. And sometimes we get hurt and it's just like, it's whatever, you know? No, yeah, I think it just, it never, it never really, at least for me, it never really sets on you that you're famous or you're doing something huge right. or like hundreds of thousands of people or millions of people might be watching you. That never you really- You almost kind of can't think about it like that. No. Then it gets kind of weird and crazy. To me, it was just, I, I mean, we were we were doing Stupid Mario with just the same friends I've had since, you know, the early high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were all growing up. By season four, we were all turning, you know, 23, 24 or something like that. And, you know, we all were trying to think about the future. And it wasn't just Ash, the, the character. It was it was several, you know, it, he, maybe he was one of the first big ones, but several, as you notice, if you go from Stupid Mario Brothers to yeah. Plumber Knight, to Stupid Mario World, to Legacy. You'll notice a lot of actors kind of drop out as they go. Right. Because we were I'm really the older one who kind of came in as like a new one. Everyone yeah, else uh, was kind of a smaller, you know. Jennifer, for example, Jennifer, who played Princess Peach, she moved to a different state and has kids now. She has, she got pregnant, had kids, got married, you know, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, she was like, yeah, that was a lot of fun. But I mean, I'm a mom now and I can't really do it anymore. Yeah. Not, to, not that I even want to. 
And you know, like, oh, uh, that's like fine. That's totally fine. So, I mean, yeah. in, the, in the case of like, uh, you know, Ash too, like, you know, actor Dane Kevin Cook, he wanted other things. He didn't want to do even before he, like, you know, he, he you know, he stopped being in all Rich Alvarez videos, of course. But before, before he even made that decision, he'd said he didn't really want to do Ash anymore. Like, he was willing to do other things, uh, but he didn't really want to play the. He was tired of playing the character of Ash. Uh, it was just not something he wanted to portray anymore. And then eventually he was like, well, I'm doing my own thing. And, uh, you know, we had done, you know, other projects where we had some, you know, project, by the way, you know, I, had, I know I haven't really mentioned this yet, but besides YouTube, I also do other video stuff that you'll never see because I do it. Like, for example, I produce content for like local, uh, you know, local businesses. Like I've done commercials for like dentist office that live, you know, down my street. I do, I have done many things. I did, you know, some of you may remember that I did a lot of commercials back at, at that time. Uh, Dane and I had done a professional uh, thing together uh, and it was a documentary, right? It was a, do it was a documentary for the National Park Service, and we, you know, just disagreed on just yeah, fundamentals on how to film it. And yeah, you decide to go your different ways after that. And after it was just like, okay, well, you know, we're going to do it this way, and you're, you know, not wanting to do it this way. So, you know, he, you know, eventually did his own thing. I mean, he was already doing his own thing, and we, we were doing our own things. I mean, there really, there's there's not much to say. See how boring that. that answer is? <laughs> See how boring that answer is? I and gotta ask, because the people want to know. You know, I can't, I know, I I know, can't I let like, it go. I feel, like, I feel like people have really built it up to be this big thing, but in reality, it's just like boring adult crap. You know, it's, it's that whole sort of thing. I mean, you know, I'll say this, the first time I'll ever say this is that I wish that I would, I would had the maturity that, I mean, I still don't feel like I'm a, 100% mature person. I'm a goofy person. It's not. I wish that I had the maturity true. to handle that situation better than I did, perhaps. And, uh, uh, you know, we're young adults. This yeah. was a year ago, and I was cringy as hell. When right. I was 22. So I, know, I think he I knows know. that, too. I think he knows that I wish that I could have handled that situation better. I think he could have handled that situation better. I think, I'm good, but that's what creative differences is. That's guys. what happens. <laughs> that's what happens in this weird thing. Yeah. And then, you know, it just happens. So, after a full five minutes of answering that question, we're still left with the same answer we've had for over half a decade now. Creative differences. But I've never been satisfied with that answer, and it's clear that Rich has nothing more to say on the subject, so I guess all I can do is continue to hypothesize. You see, when online creators stop working together and they describe their breakup as creative differences, 99 times out of 100, that creative difference is a woman. We've seen this time and time again throughout history, and hopefully, without getting too creepy, I'm going to present my best theory for what happened. Our theory begins at Dane's channel that I mentioned earlier, Random Prod. And you see that girl right there? Her name is Jackie. She has appeared in multiple videos on both the Random Prod channel and the Rich Alvarez channel. But the interesting thing is, around the time Dane stopped appearing in Rich Alvarez videos, Jackie stopped appearing in Random Prod videos. Now, if you had to guess who Rich Alvarez's present day wife is, who would you guess? That's right, it's Jackie! I think we're on to something here, folks! But as it turns out, we don't need to theorize what happened. Because as the great philosopher Adolf Hitler once said, there are two sides to every story. So I figured I'd just ask Dane Kevin Cook himself what happened. And it turns out he's now a very successful YouTube star doing a Team Fortress 2 comedy channel called Uncle Dane and currently has almost half a million subscribers. So I sent him a message telling him about this video and asking him about the fallout between he and Rich Alvarez, and this is what he had to say. Hi. I had a falling out with Rich Alvarez two times. Once in 2010 when they abruptly cut me out of the National Park Adventure Project due to not getting along with my girlfriend at the time, Jacqueline. Then we had a falling out again only a month or two after they apologized for NPA in 2013 after Richie made advances on Jacqueline that were ultimately successful and led to her leaving me for him. 
while blaming me for being a bad partner for almost six years. They also started a lot of hurtful and untrue rumors about my best friend Austin, which soured the situation further. I haven't spoken to any of the Rich Alvarez gang, Richie, Chris, Jacqueline, Julian, since 2014, and I've completely gotten over everything that happened, although I'd be completely fine with keeping the silence between us for the rest of our lives. I guess I summarize my general feelings about Rich Alvarez and the whole group associated with that channel. That group, Richie and Jacqueline in particular, are extremely toxic people. And I'm ultimately very glad things ended between us in their respective ways. Although I certainly would have liked things to have ended on a better note than stealing my girlfriend, calling my best friend insane, and blaming me for everything. I don't mind answering any other more specific questions about the channel, but that's pretty much everything in a nutshell without going into a very long and overly complicated story that pretty much just leads to we don't talk anymore because we are just very different people with wildly differing moral integrity. Good luck with your video. If people who watch your video are curious about where Ash has been, feel free to direct them to my Team Fortress 2 YouTube channel, Uncle Dane. Thanks. Well, there we have it. After all these years, I finally found the answer I was looking for. And my god, it was beautiful. And that brings us to the final two seasons of the original run of Stupid Mario Brothers. Unfortunately, due to the relatively long break between the end of the movie and the beginning of season four, the show lost a large chunk of its fan base, and the view counts began to decline. Stupid Mario Brothers became a very expensive show to make. We were taking large breaks between not just seasons, but different shows. Breaks between seasons, breaks between the original show and Plumber Night, breaks between Plumber Night and Mario World, breaks between Mario World and Mario Legacy. And of course, what happens is view count starts to, to dip a little bit because the people get impatient and don't want to stick around. We anymore. got older. To make matters worse, it seems that the 15 episode structure of each season was beginning to become a detriment. Unlike the previous seasons, seasons four and five felt as though Rich was trying to stretch the story out to fill the arbitrary 15 episode requirement. And due to that, episodes were filled to the brim with more unnecessary filler than ever before. These seasons feel like Rich came up with eight episodes worth of story and then did his best to stretch them out to 15 episodes out of traditional obligation. Due to this, the first few episodes and the last few episodes of these seasons seem to carry the brunt of the story while the episodes in the middle meander and bring little to the table beyond a forced cliffhanger for the next episode. But this, of course, was just the beginning of this problem, and it would become far, far worse years later when the show was rebooted as Stupid Mario World. With all that being said, the series finale, episode 75, was actually pretty great, but only because season 5 was completely lackluster and boring and saved all the good shit for the 68 minute series finale. I mean, look at this shit. In season five, every episode was about eight minutes long, and then the finale is fucking 68 minutes. The final episode of the 15 episode season constitutes over one third of the overall runtime. Don't you think you could have maybe divvied up the interesting content throughout the entire season and not just stuff it all into the ending? And the real question is, why am I getting so upset about a fucking web show from 2012? Anyway, the series finale was fantastic, and the ending probably brought tears to my 16-year-old eyes. And that, seemingly, was the end of Stupid Mario Brothers. The final two seasons might have relied a bit too much on disappointing filler, but the show ended on a definite high note. This is where the popularity of the Rich Alvarez channel truly began to fall. It's always extremely risky when a channel stops producing the content they were famous for and starts doing something else. And it's a risk that very rarely pays off. The transitional period between ending one show and branching out into other unrelated content can be a terribly volatile time for any content creator. I faced the exact same thing a little over a year ago when I ended the Mumkey's anime review series and started making other types of videos instead. Luckily for me, despite a rocky transitional period, my channel ended up skyrocketing in popularity compared to the numbers I was pulling in with the anime review series. But did the Rich Alvarez channel find similar success upon ending Stupid Mario Brothers? 
The simple answer is... no. Rich continued posting videos to his channel frequently, but his view counts were a mere fraction of what the Mario videos brought in. It seemed like the only thing fans wanted was Mario, and it became a crutch for the channel, as Richie began producing Mario prank videos that performed leagues better than the other content he was making at the time. It was then when he created a Mario Gangnam Style parody that blew up to be a viral hit that he realized he would be stuck doing Mario videos forever. But then, it, it, like, immediately after that, though, it's like, even though Stupid Mario Brothers had ended <laughs> at that point, we're like, oh, let's do a Stupid Mario Brothers spinoff. So we did, like, right. immediately after that, we did the football episodes. And then we were doing Stupid Mario Christmas. But it, it became horribly uh, apparent that uh, we were just going to keep on doing Stupid Mario Brothers. And then eventually we did The Plumber Night Returns, a Mario show that takes place 30 years after Stupid Mario Brothers. They became so desperate for viewership that they made Stupid Mario Brothers Football, a 12-minute video that was unnecessarily broken down into four three-minute parts with a follow-up one-minute blooper reel for each individual part. These videos, frankly, were not very good and their view counts paled in comparison to their Mario videos of the past. Ah! What the now? DK says this sucks. Meanwhile, Rich continued making non-Mario related skits and videos, and they performed even worse than the football series. However, he found a second wind when another random Mario skit went semi-viral, and this inspired him to start a new series called That Stupid Video Game Show. He figured doing random one-off skits with the Mario characters had the potential to go viral like the Gangnam Style and Mario Brothers Wii U in real life videos had, and he advertised this new series to his fans as a spiritual successor to Stupid Mario Brothers. These videos didn't pull in a huge amount of views for the most part, but Rich still managed to get huge viral hits with videos like Mario Harlem Shake and Mario Gentleman parodies. I am a Nintendo man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I am a Nintendo man. Unfortunately for the channel, these huge successes were great for getting huge amounts of views, but that didn't translate to loyal subscribers. For every major viral Mario hit, the channel would have 10 unrelated skits or let's plays, and that seemed to scare off or disappoint all the new viewers. Meanwhile, longtime fans of the channel, like myself, who were tuning in specifically for scripted long-form content, were losing interest in the channel as it became more focused on meme parodies. The Rich Alvarez channel was becoming a potpourri of content that didn't seem to keep the attention of a large fan base like the content of the past. From there, the channel continued to meander and the view counts continued to decline until Rich decided it was time to reboot the Stupid Mario Brothers series for a chance to once again garner a huge dedicated audience. But as you can see from the view counts, the damage was already done. The Plumber Night Returns was a two-season dark, gritty reboot of the series taking place in the future. The show was very clearly inspired by the Dark Knight Returns comic book, and it was actually pretty cool. The production value was far better than anything Rich had produced before, and he still regards season one as the greatest thing he's ever made. And that was, I still think that first season of, of episodes one through ten of The Plumber Night Returns, probably some of my favorite produced stuff that we've done. It's his favorite, yeah. He, yeah. he I, I think if you asked Rich what his favorite just in case it's one of your questions for later on. If you ask him, like, what, what's your favorite Stupid Mario Brothers episode content or whatnot, I'm fairly certain he's going to say Plumber Day Season yeah. 1. But despite the upgrade in production quality, the show wasn't the mass hit Rich was hoping for. It seemed as though the glory days of the Rich Alvarez channel were long gone, and despite having several viral hits and upping the production quality of his rebooted Mario series, they were never coming back. And this is where I feel the show began to actively decay. 
As season two of The Plumber Knight Returns began, Rich started a second reboot of Stupid Mario Brothers called Stupid Mario World as a response to the grittiness of Plumber Knight that large audiences didn't seem interested in. Stupid Mario World served as a nostalgic throwback to the silliness of the original first season of Stupid Mario Brothers as an attempt to catch lightning in a bottle for a second time. And it was just... In my opinion, as somebody who has been watching this shit ever since the very beginning... Horrible. It was just... Horrible. I think it's because the charm was lost. The charm of watching a group of teenagers create a show in their backyard just for fun. Maybe it's because I'm such a huge fan of bare bones amateur filmmaking. But now these guys were nearly 30 and they were trying to recreate the silly videos they made as teenagers. And I don't know... It lost me. And I know the vast majority of you would describe this entire series as cringy, but it wasn't until Stupid Mario World Episode 1 that I ever cringed watching the show. Maybe it's because I'm older and I just have nostalgia for the old stuff. But I can't help but feel as though even though they're fundamentally doing the same stuff again, there's just something different that makes it feel... embarrassing. As a fan of the show, it's actually quite sad to watch Stupid Mario World. The vast majority of the actors on the show had either moved away or weren't interested in coming back, so Rich had to write the show around the five or six people who he was still friends with. The giant cast of characters had been reduced to a handful of support characters, and midway through the show, Rich decided to start doing season-long plots again, which led to episodes that were literally four minutes long where nothing would happen, and then the final 20 seconds would be a ham-fisted cliffhanger. It's like they weren't even trying anymore. The best comparison I can make is to what people refer to as Zombie Simpsons, where The Simpsons was once one of the funniest shows of all time. It began to decline in quality, but continued being produced because it was popular, and it's now so horrible that it literally makes me want to kill myself. Got through the first one. Next one's a little harder. Just gonna focus. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> you passed the test, genius. Epic sister fail. You better not post that. And post. <laughs> the only problem with this comparison is that The Simpsons is still wildly popular despite being complete shit, whereas Stupid Mario World never even came close to the popularity of the original show. It was a horrible failure both artistically and on a viewership level. However, Despite the gigantic decline in popularity and the decay of the show, there still remained a small, dedicated fan base that continued watching after a full decade. And I, obviously, was one of those people, although at this point I was watching the show out of morbid curiosity rather than genuine enjoyment. And then, finally, Rich Alvarez put me out of my fucking misery by actually, once and for all, finishing the show on December 9th, 2017, with a movie called Stupid Mario Brothers Legacy. The film brought all of the storylines from all of the Mario shows together and tied them up in a neat bow. But unlike Act 2 of the original movie or Episode 75, I just couldn't stand this finale. It was almost as painful to watch as Stupid Mario World. Regretfully, I don't have any footage of this, but my friend Asperger was at my house when the Legacy movie came out, and he hated it so much that he took a full shot of Mad Dog 357 hot sauce so that I would turn it off. And he spent the next three hours screaming on my bathroom floor, and we almost had to take him to the hospital. My only regret in life is that I didn't film this, but he was in such terrible agony from both the movie and the hot sauce that we legitimately thought we were gonna have to call an ambulance, and it seemed like a bad time to pull out my camera. And that movie, thankfully, seems to be the actual final end of Stupid Mario Brothers. Pulling in 27,000 views as of this recording, the Legacy Movie is the most viewed video on the Rich Alvarez channel in the last 18 months. And judging by the way things are going, they'll never have a video that big ever again. 
Rich Alvarez still posts videos multiple times per week, but to say the channel is on life support would be extremely generous. The channel, in my opinion, is dead. Videos are lucky to break 1,000 views, a depressing fraction of a shadow of the glory days. But Rich Alvarez fights on, convinced that his current videos are better than ever, hoping that one day he'll return to his former glory. And sometimes it's really funny to see some people are like, oh, stupid Mario, like, what happened to that? I haven't seen that in years. Or, whoa, stupid Mario Bros, I remember watching that a long yeah, we time ago. We run people conventions all the time, and they're like, oh my god, I used to watch you all the time, and we're like, like great. We just finished the last video, we like, did, four months ago. We didn't stop. Like, <laughs> we, you know, it's like, oh, you used to watch us? That's, that's great. Like, you know, how about still? We've been continuing to produce movies, so it's like just, us. It's like sometimes I get, a little, <clears throat> I get a little butthurt. It's weird because I also made Stupid Mario Bros. But I get a little right. butthurt sometimes when people are like, oh, when Stupid Mario Bros. ended, I stopped watching. Or, you know, or when it ended, when they thought it ended, when it was supposed to end years ago or yeah, whatever. Right. But like I stopped watching because, in season like, four and I'm like, oh, wow. I really wow. like the, the comedy and the sketch humor that we're producing today. And we, you know, I think we've gotten better at our writing. I think we've gotten better at our comedic timing. We are shooting in 4K. Our tech has been getting better. Everything's gotten better, but people still like our high school humor from before. I don't know. It's this weird look into like kind of how like people romanticize nostalgia and you know yeah. things like that. But um, and I don't fault people for that. But if you want to look at like what's objectively the best content we've created, uh, the content that's happening right now. I think so. Know, so anyway. Let's move on, monkey. What's up? Let me take you back to a simpler time. Way back before, you know, 9-11, way back <laughs> before World War II, we're talking the economic crisis of 2008. Love it. Monkey mm -hmm. was a young child and he was really into a, in a YouTube series called Stupid Mario Brothers. Has anybody heard of this? <laughs> no. no I, 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 I love it already. I remember that, yeah. So it's actually quite, I love it's quite title. good. It's by this guy named Richard Michael Alvarez, where it's like they had these cosplay Mario costumes and they decided to make skits out of it, which branched off into entire episodes and seasons with like an overarching storyline. And it got really intense towards the end. There's, there's tons of cool fights with like really good special effects. It, it was crazy for okay. a YouTube series. But then, but then this is when Richard Michael Alvarez goes down the road of, of disgust. The road mm. of fuck you. Cease a black person <laughs> for the first person. Because he, <laughs> this is the type of guy, you know, it's the story that we've seen over and over again with your, your Bojacks and your right. your um, your best guys ever, you know, these types of <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah. Where they were once really big and popular and then they made a change or their show ended and now they live in obscurity and they're sad about it and they, <sighs> they thirst. <laughs> to regain the fame and the love that they had before. So like six years after the, the stupid Mario Brothers show ends, Rich Alvarez comes back because he, he'd been doing shitty stuff on YouTube for six years. Stuff uh -huh. that nobody wanted to see. He has like 120,000 subs and his videos on average get about 600 views. So I, I'm guessing oh, it's all dead accounts. Baby. Yeah. So he's like, okay, I should have monetized this shit when it was popular. I'm going to try it again. So what he's doing now, he made two new seasons of, of the show, and now, he, now he's putting it up on ransom. He says, listen up, fans. If you want me to make season three, I have to hit this $1,000 Patreon Jesus. goal per month. Okay. So instead of doing a Kickstarter to fund this season, he's using the excuse, here's a Patreon. Pay me for content that I'm not making, and you'll only get the content if I hit this goal. So pretty much throw your money away for no reason, forever, because I'm never going to hit this fucking goal and you're just going to keep classy. paying me for nothing. He didn't think that went through. So is this a creator you like? I used to when I was a kid and now I hate him because he's he's doing this bullshit on Patreon. If you need money to film the season, do a Kickstarter. So let me ask, is he right now like getting paid money, I assume, as a, you know, as a part of this campaign and is just not making anything? Yeah, yeah, he's not do he's getting money for the stupid Mario Brothers series that he's yeah. not making. Is he making other shit? I'm just wondering. He he's making like let's plays with his girlfriend that get 500 views. <laughs> okay. Oh my. quality. That's What's the his, uh... saddest thing I've ever fucking yeah. heard before. My entire fucking. What's now I, I haven't checked this channel in the last month, so maybe something's uh -huh. changed. But this went on for like six months, and then I got sick and left. That's a long time. Yeah. 
That podcast was recorded in April of 2017, and obviously I used some harsh words against Rich. Do I actually hate the man? No. Was I disgusted by his misuse of Patreon? Yes. But it turned out, Rich Alvarez ended up creating the stupid Mario Brothers Legacy movie without ever hitting his $1,000 Patreon goal, so even though I still find his original intentions to be scumbaggy, he did make up for it by producing the content anyway. But that podcast segment reminded me that this really does seem to be the age-old story of the tragic arc of propelling from obscurity into fame and then crashing back down, forever more desperate to get a taste of the success you once had. The reason why the story of Stupid Mario Brothers and Rich Alvarez is so intriguing to me and so terrifying is because I know I'm looking at my own future. This is my 15 minutes of fame of recognition, of importance, and I know it's just a short matter of time before it all comes crashing down and I'm left with nothing. I think the reason why the story of you on YouTube really speaks to me is because I think right now I'm living the Rich Alvarez in 2012 lifestyle. And yeah, your, your content is peaking right now. You're, that's the you're, thing. You're, and you're, I, you're... I see the decline just off on the horizon, because it happens to everybody. So what advice would you give me so that my life isn't destroyed and my YouTube channel declines? <laughs> right, I, there's two, of course I wish two things. I wish I could go back to 2012, knowing kind of what I know today to kind of help me not like peak off, because there are things that you can do to not quite peak off as bad. Like I wish I had, you know, really they always say daily content, daily, daily, con I still don't have daily content. That's like impossible to do. But right. I, there was a, in 2012, I was so cushy. I was like making like one good video every other week, maybe. And I wish that I had done a few videos a week. I, I wish that I had started doing things like in 2014, when I knew that things were starting to go a little sour, I was like, oh, rich vlog. And I was doing a rich vlog every, every week. I wish I had started things like that. Back in 2012, I could have saved my channel, maybe. Not that my channel's dead now, just it's not doing as well as it could be. Right. Uh, but, but you know what I mean. Uh, but also, um, if you have anything in there, I know that this sucks to hear, but if you have anything else that you'd like to do besides making videos, now's the time to start investing your time in maybe educating yourself and doing that specific thing. Like, uh, for example, when I was going to college and met Smosh and doing videos as a hobby before it got successful, I was going to school for psychiatry i was in psychology classes uh -huh. and i was planning on maybe being a family therapist or a psychologist or whatever i didn't finish that i never finished my degree because i was like that million views i do <laughs> <laughs> uh, i reckon i highly recommend that kids finish school and finish college don't, right. don't be me kids understand that the views and the income associated with that is going to be temporary just inherently yeah um uh, how temporary is up to you. And I honestly, I, I hope it lasts for years, but eventually it will draw off. And when it drops off, it's going to be great to have a Patreon. It's going to be great to have merchandise. It's going to be great to have, you know, some other cross-platform games. PewDiePie's got a video game for Christ's sake. You know, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's all these other fingers that people have in their pots. And that's the modern face of being an internet success, I think. The question that haunts me every day is, how long will this last? Is my time almost up, or am I just getting started? I have no way of knowing, but it seems obvious to me that I won't be making a living on YouTube 20 years from now for whatever reason. In a way, it feels like achieving this dream in particular is a bit of a curse, because it's guaranteed to end, and I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to cope with the loss when it all eventually fades away. I guess the point I'm trying to make is, one day, down the road, this channel is going to be a fucking trash fire. And every new video is going to have like 80 views. And when that day comes, I want you to come back to this video and leave a comment saying, HA HA! GET FUCKED, RETARD!